and in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we continue with August 7th, 1899, about our nothingness. This morning, my lovable Jesus was not coming. So she waits for Jesus every day. Jesus would appear to her every day. Uh, it's, this is not a vision. It's not a locution. It's not an apparition. It's, it's something that the church is going to reveal to us someday about what this is all about. It's, it, this is not a saintly thing, a good thing, a holy thing. This is, she's actually with Jesus, one with him. And after much waiting and waiting, waiting, she says, finally, Jesus came and my confoundedness and annihilation was such that I was unable to tell him anything. So here she's just overwhelmed by meeting Jesus, seeing Jesus again. And Jesus said to me, Louisa, the more you annihilate yourself and come to know your nothingness, the more my holy humanity unleashing rays of light shall communicate to you my virtues. So what Jesus is saying is this annihilation of yourself, it's, it's stop thinking that we're important. Uh, I am somebody. I am important. And no, we're children of God, and God is important. Our whole focus is of God, uh, looking at God, adoring God, loving God, praising God, thanking God, glorifying God, worshiping God. That's heaven. And Jesus wants us to recognize the human will is we're important. It's what I think, what I want, what I desire. And it's not. Jesus says, the more you annihilate yourself, the, you, you're, you're a glass filled with water. The more you pour that out of yourself. You know, he says that it's poison. It, you, you, you drink this and you're, 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 you have this um, feeling that uh, you are good. And, and Jesus says, you know, only God is good. And, and what he asks of us is, is to focus on him and him alone. So he says, the more you annihilate yourself and come to know your nothingness, I am nothing. God is everything. Just, just look at where we are in the universe. Uh, we're a speck in, in, the, in, the sol in this solar system, a speck in this uh, milky way. And what God is asking of us is he's asking us to recognize that he can hold all of this in his hand, the whole universe in his hand. And, and we are really nothing. And, and he's calling us to surrender our nothingness to him. Lord, you are, I am nothing. You are everything. Uh, I am little. You are grand. You, I am a sinner. You are, you are holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. So when we do this, when we listen to what Jesus is saying, the more you annihilate yourself, basically, no ego, no will. It's it's to to be surrendered. I, like Our Lady said, "Fiat mihi." I I am the little slave girl of the Lord. Let it be done to me as you say. As Jesus said to his Father, "Not my will, but your will be done." It's the annihilation of of your ego, your will. She says, "The more my holy humanity, then can unleash these rays of divine light that so shall communicate to you, shall speak to you, shall breathe into you." my divine virtues. So what the Lord is asking of us is he's asking us to begin to live this abundant life of peace, joy, and happiness, to live this abundant life of heaven while on earth. And if, if the earth is our goal, the things of earth are what we want, uh, Jesus says, you, you haven't annihilated yourself enough to want what, what you cannot see. Uh, the heaven, you, you, he says, the things of earth are beautiful. Uh, he says, there's this, all the divine I love you's around us in all of creation. He says, but when we enter into heaven on earth, we begin to participate in the things of heaven, not the things of earth. And Louisa said to Jesus, Lord, I am so bad. I am so ugly as to be horrifying to myself. This is what we have to understand sin is. Sin is uh, ugly, horrifying. And we have to have the uh, ability to say no to sin. And we have to teach ourselves 
through what Jesus is teaching us, how to live this, this life of peace, joy, and happiness, how to live this life of holiness. This holiness is important. This holiness is has to become our life. If, if we want heaven, we have to become holy. So volume one through volume 10 is we have to become a, uh, a, a divine mirror of Jesus. And then volume 11 through volume 19, we, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to uh, fill us, breathe in us, uh, this living in the divine will through the power of the Holy Spirit. And then finally, we have to learn how to enter into this volume 20 through volume 36, how to receive the divine inheritance of the Father. If we don't understand sin, we cooperate with it. If we don't understand sin, we, we make deals with sin. Uh, or I, I'm not, I, can, I could do this because the world is doing this. I could do this because, you know, everybody else is, is doing this. And no, no, sin has to be so horrifying that we want nothing to do with it. This is why when we go to confession, we say, I, I want to uh, uh, avoid all the near occasions of sin. I want to uh, make a firm purpose of amendment. With that, what happens is God goes, good, good. How are you going to do it? And that's where, we, that's where we have to learn that sin is horrifying. Sin is, is terrible. And we learned this from Louisa. She says, what uh, must I be before you, Lord? See, that, that's the illumination of conscience. The illumination of conscience is we're going to see um, where we are in the presence of God, how God sees us. How, how uh, she says, what must I be before you if I compromise with sin? Jesus says, no, 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 this is for our benefit. Louisa knew her nothingness. But what, what does Jesus say to Louisa? He says, Louisa, if you are ugly, then I am he who can make you beautiful. So what we want is we, we want to turn to Jesus. This is, how do we understand sin? is by being with Jesus. The more we're with Jesus, the more we see this light, this love, this light of God, uh, this life that, that he wants us to possess. And we, we are drawn to want to live this life, this light, this love of God. So when we spend time in front of the Blessed Sacrament, the more we focus on Jesus adoring him, loving him, praising him, thanking him, blessing him, worshiping him. The more we do this, the more we become aware of how horrible, horrifying sin is. So Jesus says, if you know that you're ugly, he says, I am he who can make you beautiful. So he wants us to reflect his divine beauty in holiness. This is, this is what it is. Uh, it's, it's, and, and the world is oppressed by ugliness to the point that we think ugliness is okay. Horrifying sin is okay. Uh, we compromise with it all day long. Uh, uh, if, if, if you're watching TV and something comes up that is against the law of God, against uh, the, the purity of God, you know, we should turn the TV off. But what we do is we go, well, it was funny. It was interesting. It was, it was different. And we, we don't see the horror that's there, the, the, the ugliness of sin that's there. And, and we compromise with it. I, I've been to people's homes where they're, you know, watching TV. And I'll say, Why, how can you stand watching this? Like, oh, oh it, it's funny. No, it's not funny. It's sin. And, and this is what we have to do. We have to begin to live a Catholic life, a universal life, uh, avoid the near occasions of sin. So Jesus says this. So in the act of saying this, Jesus sent a light from himself to my soul. So this light emanated from Jesus. You can see this in, in the, um, the image of uh, divine mercy. Jesus, I trust in you. This, this light coming from Jesus what is it to to our soul and it seemed that jesus would communicate his divine beauty to my soul 
this is what's happening every day. When we get close to Jesus in the front of the Blessed Sacrament, when we look at Jesus at the monstrance, he is communicating his divine beauty to us. And he's trying to help us become aware that it's a new and divine way of holiness that's coming to the earth. The kingdom is coming. The time of the reign of the evil one and his this sin that's all around us that we have been compromising with all this time, even not knowing it, what that's all going to be disappear. And we're going to enter into heaven, heaven on earth, the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. So he wants to communicate. He wants this light, this love, this life of Jesus from himself to, to uh, give us his divine beauty. He wants us to enter into uh, the, this, this life of God that is far from most of us. And then embracing me, Jesus began to say, how beautiful you are, but beautiful of my own divine beauty. And this is why I am, God, drawn to love you. So he loves us because of holy baptism. We are in God's image. And how beautiful you are. You're my child. You're my life. You're, you're my all. But the beauty is of my own divine beauty. It's not yours. We are nothing. God is everything. And he wants us to reflect him. He wants us to live the, this life of him. He wants us to receive the divine inheritance that he is giving to us. And he says, this is why I, God, am drawn to love you. Because he sees himself in us. He has breathed this divine will into us. And he's asking us to begin to live this abundant life. He's asking us to say fiat. And when we say fiat, great things happen. Amazing things happen. So we got to rec we have to recognize that the the sin that's around us in, in this world, we, we have to recognize that this is not the life that our God wants us to live. He wants us to live his life, his beauty, not the things of the earth. Uh, so Jesus says this, who can say how, or Louisa said, who can say how, how confounded I remain more than ever, but may everything be for his glory. So here she's recognizing First of all, what, what, what Peter said when, 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 when he made the miracle on the lake, Peter fell, you know, the, the thousand fish, the, the, you know, all these fish, these three, what was it, um, filled the boat, two boats filled with fish. Peter says this, Lord, leave me. I am a sinful man. Then Jesus says, good. Now you understand you are a sinner. I am, I am God. He says, now I can use you. It's the same thing with Louisa. Louisa says, how, how ugly I must be uh, to you, Lord. And Jesus says, I'm the, one that can, I'm the one that can make you beautiful, but with a divine beauty, not a human beauty. If we can't see the beauty of Louisa in her bed, if we can't see the beauty of Louisa, this little newborn, our eyes aren't opened yet. If we see an old woman in bed, uh, again, we're not seeing what Jesus says, how beautiful you are, Louisa, but beauty of my own divine beauty. And I am drawn as God to love you, to recreate you, to become what I have wanted from the beginning of time. We'll end with a prayer. May the blood that flowed upon the water of this cross free us from our human will, that we live in God's holy divine will always. We ask this in Jesus' name, under the mantle of Mary, through the intercession of Louisa. And we pray that this prayer becomes God's command. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.